So when I was in secondary school, there was uh, a good friend of mine who was particularly taken by one of the girls in, in, in our year. And when we'd be, we'd be talking away, talking about whatever we'd watched on TV the day before or football or whatever it was. And whenever she'd walk past then, you'd just see him just stop. He'd stop talking and he'd... So, sorry, what, what, what were you saying? Right. And it was like, I find it was just interesting to see the effect that uh, someone he considered beautiful had on him, right? Now, that's not it's not necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, one should be a little more subtle uh, when one is, you know, looking. <laughs> but, but it's the beginning of something good, almost. As in, it, it depends on how it's used, right? Depends on how it's used. What he had just experienced there was all, right? All just where where you see something, you see something beautiful, and and everything else just becomes kind of kind of irrelevant. And this, whatever this is, uh, it, it takes all of your focus, all of your attention. Now, again, that, that, that in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. What you do with it then can can be that, that's where the morality comes in. Uh, like if you see someone who you find attractive, okay, it's actually that's not a, not a sin to actually have the courage and to ask them out. Who are you? I'd like to get to know you better. Nothing, nothing sinful or wrong with that, with that at all, unless you're a priest uh, uh, or you're married. Okay, um, but but at that, at that stage there would have been nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with. It. In fact, if anything, uh, that sense of awe can can cause within us. Uh, reverence, reverence, right? Which is a really, really good thing. Reverence. So when, when you look, it, 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 all, all the little things that follow, all these things that would be considered, you know, gentlemanly or, or, or polite, should all be expressions of of reverence towards someone who who you like, or maybe someone who you love, or you who you hope you will love in time. So opening a door, you know, pulling out the seat, um, you know. All, all, of the, all of those kind of little dating things are all uh, manifestations of, of reverence. I'm, I, wanna, I want you to be okay. I want you to be comfortable. I want to take care of you. I want to show that I'll serve you. I'm opening a door for you. That's an act of service, right? Reverence. And reverence is, is so, so important. And, and today, uh, reverence has taken an awful beating in the world because we don't understand it and we don't live it very much. So when, when we see someone who's attractive, the immediate kind of reaction or the immediate thing that we're almost encouraged to do, required to do, is, is to, to lust after the person, to desire them in, in, in an intimate way, in a sexual way. And that, hang on, hang on, that, that's, 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 the, that's the wrong order of things. No, no, no. I, I, I like this person as a person as opposed to what can they give me what can I get from them? That's a very, that, that's not reverence, nor is that all. That's lust. So it's, it's very, very different, the, the, the mentality that, that, that's kind of encouraged today. Um, I've, I've given this example before, but um, from in one of the James Bond movies, it's not Casino Royale, uh, Skyfall, Skyfall. Um, James Bond goes into one of these pub bar restaurant things where as always where all these shady deals are done and um, sees this you know wonderfully stunning girl who's there against her will she's you know ca captive there by some bad warlord guy and um, as James Bond is wound to do he they mutually seduce each other whatever you'd call it and um, a little bit of intimacy happens grand okay following day well not grand but it happened uh, following day then uh, the bad guy thinks he has some leverage over James Bond because you obviously like this lady whatever her name was so he had her tied to a pole right, and put a little shot glass of scotch on her head and puts a gun into James Bond's hand and says if you shoot the glass off her head she's free to go now in the new James Bond movies he's actually a really bad shot so he holds up his gun Right? and deliberately just kind of shoots way over her head. Pew. Right? Then the bad guy comes along, takes the same gun, boom, shoots her, 
and she falls down limp and James Bond looks at her and says, what a waste of a glass of whiskey. <laughs> now, when I, when I saw this, I thought, my goodness, like this, this is the level that we have fallen to. I mean, maybe it was, it was kind of said in, in jest, but that's 100% like a pornographic mentality where a beautiful girl is just there for your pleasure and then when, when she's gone, good, next one. Just like comp no sense of awe, no sense of reverence, no love at all. Now, why do I say this? Uh, today's, today's reading, uh, when Moses sees the burning bush. Now, a couple of details here. Mo Moses saw something that, that, was, that was supernatural. So sometimes when you see pictures of the burning bush, artists kind of forget that the burning bush was burning, but it wasn't burning, right? The whole point, sometimes you see the burning bush and it's all black and thorny. And, uh, no, because that, that's called a bush on fire, right? That's nothing special. We've, we've seen those before. That's a bush on fire. Okay, so this, this is different. So, um, firstly it says, there an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the, in, the shape of, in the shape of a flame of fire coming from the middle of the bush. Moses looked, there was a bush blazing, but it was not, it was not being burnt up. I must go and look at this strange sight. So, What's that? It's just this sense of awe and wonder, okay? It's a good thing, it's a good thing. But now the Lord saw him go forward to look and God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, he said, he, here I am. He answered, come no nearer, take off your shoes for the place on which you stand is holy ground. Reverence. He's asking for reverence. So you don't just kind of saunter casually up to the burning bush and give it a poke with a stick and see what's going on. Like this was the kind of thing where you, you came no closer, you took off your shoes, and he falls to his knees. In, in fashionable terms today, it's kind of, we don't really have something similar. Maybe back 50, 60 years ago, taking off your hat, your hat would have been a kind of a sign of gentlemanliness, you know, and all that. So you take off your hat in the presence of, of uh, you know, when you, when you bless yourself, or when you're receiving a blessing, or when you go to Mass, you take off your hat. We don't really have a kind of a fashion thing. I mean, people, gentlemen still leave their ties on during Mass. Uh, we don't really have uh, an, uh, an easy or an, an equivocal sign today. Uh, our... Muslim brothers do something similar. They take off their shoes and they go to their mosques. But what we're seeing here is that God, in, in this miraculous form, is being shown great reverence. Reverence. And as I say, in our modern world, we've, we've, we've lost that. So when it comes to the, the altar, when it comes to the Eucharist, when it comes to even the sanctuaries, the word sanctuary, that's this part of the, in our chapel, it's the, the tile pit up at the front. That, that means the holy place, sanctus, you know, holy. So the sanctuary is the holy place. This is, there's nothing casual about this, you know. So our way of, of, of showing reverence is, is to genuflect whenever we pass in front of the tabernacle, uh, to receive Holy Communion. Again, with, with, with profound reverence, with, with, with an awareness of what, what, what we're doing, with that kind of sense of, of, of a holy awe. Like when we see something or someone who, who we find beautiful, you have to multiply that by, by a thousand when we're in the presence of God, who deserves all reverence, the greatest reverence, anything, but just this kind of casual attitude. Casual is, 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 is the opposite to be casual around something so holy, so sacred. So we don't remove our, our shoes in our contemporary culture, but it's not, what's important isn't if we're removing shoes or hats. Or, what's important is the attitude of heart. Now, it should show itself, obviously, in, in, in our demeanor as well, but that we receive the Lord knowing what we're doing and with a profound sense of awe and reverence and, and, and privilege 
and unworthiness. And that's why it's important that before we receive the Lord, we say, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. You're dead right. You're not. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. On my own, on, I'm not worthy. But, but you heal me. You forgive me. You make me worthy. And then we can approach the Lord with such gratitude. Lord, I'm, I'm only here because you make it possible for me to be here. And I have this privilege of receiving you into my heart because of your desire to be united with me. What, oh, what reverence we should have. Take off your shoes for the place on which you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, he said. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses covered his face. Lord Jesus, deepen within us our Eucharistic adoration, our sense of reverence in your presence. And may you both, St. Joseph and our Blessed Lady, teach us how to receive your Son as you did. Amen.